Hey, it's Rainiac, Smell the Train Shooter, back in the corner and back with another tutorial for you. Now, at the minute on the channel, yeah, we're in the process of doing a bit of a fundraiser and made in a load of scatter rocks, yeah, and some hills to sort of sell off to fund a new studio move and to kit the new studio out ready for live filming. Okay, now as part of that process, we're making absolutely loads of scatter rocks out of offcuts and cheap uh, polystyrene. And I've come to the point where actually I thought I'd share the technique. Now we have covered carving polystyrene before into rock faces. Yeah, and we covered it and it's in the Hills playlist. Yeah, but we've never actually talked about individual scatter rocks. Now you may think that actually it's quite easy, you just carve it into a blob and there you go. Well, there's a couple of things that you can do that to really make them stand out and to make them work better for your tabletop and overall improve the quality. Yeah, and so what I've been doing as part of this process, and I did it at the actual planning of this video on our live show. So if you're interested in seeing you know, the planning between this, yeah, go check out the live show. Yeah, it's quite interesting. But we put an absolute load of points, and what I did want to do is quickly take you through carving something like that, yeah, to get something like that. And the basic key techniques and principles that we use. So with that in mind, I don't want to really this to be a massive, massive video. Yeah, because well, my videos are long enough as it is. So let's come over to the bench and we'll get stuck in, yeah? Right, we've got a piece here. And very quickly, I'm going to run through the basic construction. Okay, it's sitting on a 6mm piece of MDF, which has been cut and then beveled with a sander. Yeah, you don't have to use MDF. You know, you can use what you call it. We've been playing with expanded PVC board. Uh, and also, you know, you can get away with foam board as long as the lip isn't too great. Yeah, moving on. Yeah, we've got... Uh, Expanded polystyrene. This isn't the high density stuff. This is the bobbly stuff. This is an offcuts project, so I'm just using spare bits of offcuts. Expanded is perfectly fine to work with terrain. Yeah, you can sand it. You can use hot tools on it. For the majority of this, in fact, pretty much all of it. Yeah, I'm going to be using just a simple blade. Uh, you can do this with high density, and of course, the benefit of high density is you can get even more detail in it, yeah? Expanded tends to take large detail really well, but fine detail tends to get lost in it. Okay, now putting it together, it was quite easy. We got a base, we beveled it, yeah, we got loads of offcuts, and basically we got rough shapes, glued them down. Now, this has been glued with PVA. You can use hot glue, but it has to be at a low temperature. So use it when the glue starts to watch it warm up. Yeah, and if the gun gets too hot, yeah, and you don't have a variable temp temperature gun, you can simply unplug it, let it cool down, then crack on. Yeah, but like I say, this has been PVA PVA'd. Now, that's the basic construction, and that's how I've got my block. Okay? Next job is to actually turn it into a scatter rock. Now there's a, normally when I do this, I just do it, yeah? And it goes from this to a scatter rock. But for the purpose of this video, I've sort of broken it down into stages and techniques, as I think that's the best way of getting the information across to you. Okay, so the first thing that we need to really do is sort of constrain it. At the minute we've got all these sort of manufactured edges, yeah, and anything which is manufactured does not suit well to looking natural. Okay, so we need to get rid of those. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bevel off the top, yeah, and then I'm going to come down, I'm going to sort of blend in all these sort of edges so we don't have those. And it is literally a simple matter of getting your blade, yeah. Yeah, and what I'll do is I'll do roughly one face, yeah, and then, you know, you can see the techniques and then I'll carry on the piece. You don't have to watch me carve the entire piece. Yeah, so all I'm doing now is I'm looking at all the sharp manufactured edges, the join lines, making sure where the overlaps are, and I'm trimming them off. Yeah, round to this side, same here. We've got a bit of a lip overhanging there, so I need to cut in. Yeah. We've got a manufactured there. I'm avoiding this because that's the next little bit. Yeah. So just quickly get this one down. That's how overhang. That's a big overhang there. I'm going to end up doing all of it, aren't I? No, I'm not. No, be professional, Bose. Yeah, this is going to get very messy. I'm probably moving that out of shot, aren't I? I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to get more professional with these videos. So there we have it. And basically, as you can see, yeah, all I've done is literally taken off all the sort of edges yeah and compared to that side where you can see you know the ridges and that sort of stuff it's a lot smoother yeah and it's a lot more organic yeah it isn't anywhere near but it doesn't look like sheets anymore now at the same time one of the other things that we have to do is when you glue it down you typically go over the base 
over the lip with your large chunks, especially if you're just knocking them down like we did. Yeah, so you've got to sort of constrain it and give yourself that sort of bevel bank, that edge, because that's where we're going to be putting our grit, our static grass, you know, uh, our flowers and our clump foliage. So it's a simple matter of just coming round. Don't worry about cutting into your board like I have there, because that'll get covered. Yeah, and just nip off that edge and just expose the edge. Yeah, and as soon as you do that, straight away, yeah, you can see the difference. Right, next job is I'm very quickly going to do the rest of it and I will come back once that's done and I'll show you done. So that's all done now, we've got rid of all our manufactured edges, yeah, we've pulled back the base and sort of exposed the bevel. Yeah, and it's looking rather good. Now, at the minute, it is just a lump of polystyrene. Now, you could literally just give that a bit of a coat of something art, you know, some sort of glue. Yeah, paint it up and you would be good to go. It would work as terrain, but it's not really that interesting. And when it comes to painting it, uh, because it's essentially a large flat surface, yeah, painting wise when it comes to terrain, it's going to be difficult to make it interesting. Okay, so the next job is to shape the overall shape to make it interesting. Now, when it comes to uh, the overall shape, there's two ways of approaching it, yeah? Your rock can either sort of be sort of symmetrical or it can lean off to one side, yeah? Now, the better rocks are always the ones that are what we call unilateral, they lean off to one side, yeah? The reason being it's more interesting to the eye. Rocks are very rarely symmetrical in real life. Yeah, it, it does happen, and so it's not a hard and fast rule, but generally, if you can sort of lever the rocks over to one side and, and create a more interesting sort of shape, it'll be more interesting when it comes down to your actual, you know, looking at it. It's visually, it's more interesting. That's a lot of interestings, isn't it? Okay, now, when you watch it, when you're actually shaping the main core shape before you go into the detailing, yeah, there's a couple of things that you need to consider. First off, line of sight, yeah? How much line of sight does this need to block? What does it need to hide? Yeah, is a big model gonna need to hide behind it? Is it gonna need to provide sort of hard cover but still allow troops to shoot over it, in which case it'd be much lower? On top of that, you know, how are models gonna interact with it? Are they gonna simply move around with it and it's a placement blocker? Or are you gonna shape it in such a way that, you know, we can interact it with models? And that's what I'm gonna do with this one. And finally, storage. Yeah, if you're making a load of these, it's a good idea that when you're actually at the building stage to consider storage. Now, as I said, yeah, we can sort of make plateaus and stuff to have models on the top. You know, you could put a model flat on there because it's nice and flat. But at the same time, if you're using lots of the same material, yeah, what you can do is you can create four or five pieces that are all the same height and have a plateau top, a nice decent one. Okay, you know, at least, you know, two inches. And then, when it comes to packing, because these are quite short, okay, you can put them down in a box, so of one in each corner, one in the middle, and then rest a piece of cardboard wrapped in bubble wrap on top of them to create another layer. And your rocks become a, a sort of a support in your storage system. So, it's another factor to consider when you're carving your rocks and you're doing a set. Okay, so we've got how, how do models interact with it? What does it need to block when we think about shape yeah, and storage? Now, for this piece, I'm not really worried about storage. I do want it to be a nice blocking line of sight piece, but I do want models to be able to perhaps interact with it, step on slopes, yeah? At the same time, I don't want it to be symmetrical. I actually want it to be sort of lopsided because that's more interesting. So, when it comes to shaping, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a good chunk off, yeah? Now, I've got to do this in stages because we're going quite a big chunk. Yeah. And then just do that. Okay. And that's the rough cut to start getting the shape. And immediately it starts to become a little bit more interesting. Okay. So. We've got our rough shape that we want. We know that we want a rough plateau up there that we can perhaps get a sniper on there. We want to make this a little bit more interesting. I'm not sure if we're going to have placement on the top of here. Yeah, we'll see as we go. It grows organically. Like I said, typically when I do these things, I just, I see the rock inside the block before I even sculpt it. Do you know what I mean? And it just comes out. Yeah, in this case, because I'm breaking it down to the individual techniques, it's a little bit more, let's figure it out as we go, as you know what I mean. Right, so the next thing that we've got to do is we've got to, 
break up the, the blockiness of it, yeah? And we do that by creating ridges and crevices. So for example, yeah, see how that's nice, long and smooth, yeah? That's gonna be a pain to paint because there's very little really raised edges for us to highlight. There isn't any really deep areas for us to get our shade in and our dirt. So what we're gonna do, and it's a little bit awkward on camera, but I'll do it like this. Yeah, so we're gonna come in and we're gonna make a V. Yeah, and immediately that becomes more interesting. You've broken that large area up into two separate areas. You've created ridge lines, yeah, to catch the various, what you call it, dry brushing when you do it, yeah, and as a highlight area. And you've created a crevice, yeah, to get your dark mud in, yeah, which will give you light and contrast, yeah, and when it comes to painting it, it'll give you a far more beautiful piece. So all we're gonna do is, we're gonna use that, yeah, to continue the sort of technique. So, yeah, we'll put another one in here and sort of separate these rock blocks off. Yeah, and I'm just flicking that out, V cut and flicking it out. Yeah, so we're sort of coming in and making these separates. Yeah, I also like the idea that that's quite big. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna put a slope in as well. Yeah, so everything isn't so sheer. Yeah, so I fancy a slope somewhere there and I fancy that's a bit large, so we'll put a slope in there. Yeah, okay. Now we need to watch we'll also break that up. We could also do with breaking this up a bit. So what we'll do is we'll come down, yeah, and we'll put a plateau in there. Yeah, I'm simply slicing along, then down and popping it out. Yeah, come in, we'll do our V cuts and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, cut it into there as well to make sort of a dip. Yeah, and then on this edge here. Yeah. Flip that out. Now typically when you do your V cuts, you don't really want to go straight down like I have on here. Yeah? <laughs> Mel's at it again. You sort of want to go off at an angle. Yeah, vertical cuts in nature aren't that common. Yeah, well, well let's say they are, I mean there's millions of them to be perfectly honest. Yeah, but what I'm trying to say, it's more common to see cuts at an angle and at a slant. So if we come up here, I want to make this a little bit more interesting. Yeah, so if I come up here and I put a V cut in there, yeah, and when I'm doing these sort of V cuts, if you want to make it, you want to avoid long V cuts, okay, because they're long and straight, and once again in nature nothing is long and straight, or very rarely, yeah, so little V cuts that change angle and move around the piece are always more interesting, yeah, so we bring that in there, and I come this up, we'll bring it up here, and we're taking it literally to the top, okay, and then we'll bring that in there. Yeah, that's still a bit too bold, so I really want to, I'm going to break that up completely, yeah. Okay, so I'll put a V-cut straight down the middle. Yeah, now you can see straight away that we've got two level surfaces, and that doesn't look right, yeah, because it's the symmetrical thing again. So if we come along and we say, well, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll bring this one down a bit, and we'll, we'll take that to an edge, okay, just a bit. We're only taking about five mil off it, but if I bring it up, yeah, immediately it loads better. Okay, so we're breaking up the uniformity of the piece with our V cuts. Yeah, we're avoiding long vertical cuts. Okay, and preferencing on the sort of zigzag cuts. Now we've got this bit down here, that's a break there, so really we need to continue that. And let's make this into like a shard. Yeah, so where I said we don't do long V cuts, we go and do a long V cut. There's always an exception to the rule. So we put that one in there. And yeah, break that off there. And then bring it in here. Yeah. And straight away you can see yeah, how that's made that more interesting. So I think the next thing I need to do is work on breaking these up and creating individual formations. So little cuts just to sort of separate, now we've got the big rock clusters and the basic shape forms. Yeah, we'll bring that down like that, sort of change that off there. Yeah, I like that V, bring it round here. This one, that's a bit too flat, but I want to maintain it at least a bit for models, so they've got somewhere to stand. It's that placement thing again. That one's roughly okay, we'll just take that bit of edge off there. Yeah, this is overhanging a little, so bring that in a bit, that's better. Yeah, I do like that, but we'll take that edge off there. And this one is a bit too much, too square as a flat. 
So I want to break that large surface area up. Yeah, I'll do that by just beveling that off and sort of retracting that rock face so they're not both sitting it like it's an edge with a V in it. This one seems like it's sitting back a bit more. And like I say, when I do this normally, it's very much a case of I just do it. You know, these principles and techniques are sort of stuck in my head and I do it on automatic. Yeah, in this case, I'm having to break it down and sort of do it bit by bit. Yeah, oh, you don't like that. Let's get rid of that. Yeah, let's bring the, in fact, yeah, let's have an overhang cluster. Yeah, so I'm extending that V there. Yeah, I've got to be careful because that's a large surface, so I need to break that up a bit. Yeah. Yeah, and there we are, I've got a bit of a spiral going up there. Yeah, trim that bit off there. Yeah, we could create another plateau there. Yeah, because that would break that up a bit. Yeah, just, or a ledge, shall we say. See how messy this gets. Let me have a look at it. Yeah, even, you see, even the creative process. You just still have to have a look at it. I want to nip that down a bit. That's a bit too steep there. Yeah. So, we've got some interesting shapes there. We could do with some points, couldn't we? Because it's all little, lots of plateaus. And rocks typically have pointy up bits. So let's, let's, uh, that one or that one. Hmm. Let's bring this one into a point. Yeah. Or when I say point, take away the plateauness of it, if you know what I mean. Plateau the plateauness, is that even a word? I bet my arm's getting in the way of the camera, isn't it? And there's me constantly trying to improve video quality. We'll get there. All right, that's a bit better. Yeah, quick nip around there. Yeah, that looks a bit. Mm. Yeah, uh, just a little bit there. And then perhaps put a V in there just to break that surface area up. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. We've got a long surface area there, so that's another V in there, just to break it up. Yeah. Yeah. And there we have it. Okay, so we've, we've carved our block down into a unique rock cluster. Yeah, basically we've identified it into different formations. We've used our simple V cuts, avoiding long vertical ones. Okay, and we've used lots of small ones to break all the rock clusters up. We've approached it on the, on the principle of creating individual clusters, then working on to break up, yeah, to break up the large surface areas. And then what we've come in, we've come in, we've taken a points and plateau sort of approach. Pick which clusters we want to be sort of pointed at the top, which ones we want flat for model placement, yeah, and then simply taking it from there. Now, all in all, as a technique, it's actually really simple. It's only, you know, it's cutting polystyrene, in it? It's not hard, yeah? The only real technique I've used is cutting a V. You know what I mean? And then just occasionally shaving a bit off. But it's the principles, yeah? Of making these plateaus, making the rock formations, breaking up large surface areas. Because all these lines is where all your shadow's gonna go in. And visually, when you put the piece down, it is gonna be a lot more visually striking than a lump of polystyrene. Now, final thing to do on it, and yeah, you've got a lot of sort of really sharp edges. Yeah, you can use any sort of sandpaper. You can use a heat gun as well. Okay, very gently, just give it a quick blast over with a heat gun and that'll, that'll smooth off the, the ridges as such. But once again, really sharp angular lines, you know, they don't really work with nature and rocks. Yeah, so a quick sand over. I love getting messy. Good, are we good? Are we good? I think we're good. Mm. Or is it an artist is never happy with his work? There we go, really messy. Yeah, kids, don't do this at home without you know 
your wife's permission. <laughs> yeah, so there we have it, guys. Really simple, really effective. Great way of making individual rock clusters, you know, that are visually striking and functional as terrain. You know, your models can interact with them, they will work. This will provide line of sight covering, yeah, for a large model. It will allow model placement on it. I'm actually thinking you could get a cheeky sniper firing over there. Yeah, I quite like that idea. Okay, so there you have it, guys. That's the basic techniques. That's the basic principles. You know, get your rough shape, get rid of manufactured areas, expose the bevel. Once you've done that, figure out the rough shape of whether you want it sort of unilateral, symmetrical, or whether you want it sort of, you know, sorry, bilateral, sort of symmetrical, or unilateral, where it's off to one side. Get your basic shape down. Then start identifying rock clusters. Carve the rock clusters out using the V shape and then simply go in on a points and plateau system yeah, to sort of change each rock cluster yeah, to sort of make it sort of unique. And so they're not all little plateaus or they're not all peaks. Uh, and in the end, you end up with an awesome rock like that. Yeah, now I've only got another 62 of these to go, so I'd better crack on. In the meantime, I'll have a quick tidy before Kez comes back, and we'll go for the long shot, guys. So, guys, there you have it. Yeah, a couple of key techniques and a couple of simple principles, yeah? Apply those to building your rock scatter terrain, and you will get a wonderful set of interesting pieces really cheaply, and they won't look like blobs of polystyrene, yeah? Uh, now, obviously, we've only taken it to the rough shaping, etc., and, and getting it roughly to ready for coating and all that sort of stuff. Taking it further, yeah, we've already covered that on the channel, and all the videos are in the Hills playlist. So if you don't know, yeah, go check it out there, and you'll find load of, loads of examples, instructions. There's no point in me going over it again, and I'm not at that stage of this build. Yeah, as always, guys, yeah, Simple, quick video, but, well, I say quick, another day's job, but, you know, hopefully you'll find it useful, and hopefully, you know, you'll be able to pick up those odds and ends and actually give it a go and make some terrain yourself, yeah, and that's what this is all about. Finally, yeah, obviously, guys, yeah, if you've got any questions about this technique, anything you'd like to add, throw it in the comments. If you know anyone who needs to make some rock scatter scenery, point them in the way of this video, and as always, yeah, if you really do like this, yeah, and you want to help support this dream of me helping the community build better terrain, yeah, then there's always the patron thing, you know, that $1 a month pledge. Now, if you're not into patron yet, yeah, down below there's also watch a, a link to the PayPal if you just want to send a one-off. But understand, you're not just helping me achieve my dream or helping me as a dad, you know, put food on the table. Your contributions are helping to grow this channel, get the tutorials out, and get better tables across the world because that's what we're about building better battlefields so please guys if you really do like it and it helps and you want to help yeah consider that or consider that yeah and that'd be awesome in the meantime guys i normally say at the end of these videos i will see you nine o'clock uk time yeah on sunday for the live show but we're in the middle of a live week so yeah if you're watching this and it's only just gone up, I'll probably see you in a day or two live for another one as we crack on with that mammoth build session. Yeah, if not, and this is later on, well, come see me live, 9 o'clock UK time on Sunday. I'm bound to be there. See you then, guys. All the best. Ta-ra.